so our next uh, honoree is M. Emmett Walsh. Uh, now, this, this is a man that has been in everything under the sun. Uh, every yes, third that's very right, true. <laughs> he has uh, some kind of amazing, I think, 188 credits uh, to his name in film and television. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he was, I mean, I remember, like you said, like, there's, I mean, there's this year, but one year, I remember, it was like, every movie I would watch, he was in, and it wasn't, and that's not a bad thing, he was just, always brought something to those films, and, right, incredible. Right, and, and, actually, he was, uh, he, he's got seven movies lined up, uh, this year alone, they're in various stages of production, and uh, when I contacted him to see if he could do the show, uh, his agent said that he was on the stage. So he's, he still works like a madman on, on stage and on television and in movies. Uh, just an amazing actor. Uh, and w- what would your favorite uh, M.M. at Walsh performance be, Jerry? Well, one of my favorites, I think, is probably might be one of yours as well, is Blood Simple. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first thing I remember watching him in. And that, God. All right, time is flying by. That was well over 20 years ago, but um, 22 years ago. But, you know, it's funny. You go back. He's also one of Chris's favorite films, too, The Music of Chance. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And and my personal favorite. And Clean and Sober. That is my personal favorite M.M. at Walsh performance, Clean and Sober. And one of my favorite movies from that decade, too, as uh, as, as you well know. Uh, so our, uh, one of our guests for the evening is on the line. He's the director of the film uh, of the clip that you just heard from Killer Image. And uh, let's begin our tribute to M. Emmett Walsh right now. M. Emmett Walsh is an extraordinary actor with well over 180 film and television credits to his name. This man can and has played everything on stage and screen from genial to twisted, from hysterically funny to frighteningly ominous. One of his first major motion pictures was 1970's Arthur Penn classic Little Big Man. Other films in his most impressive resume include Brubaker, Serpico, Silkwood, Reds, Wildcats, Harry and the Hendersons. I've got to give a shout-out to Harry and the Hendersons for, <laughs> for Chris. The Mighty Quinn, The Music of Chance, Raising Arizona, and Clean and Sober. But perhaps movie lovers know him best from his unforgettable work in the landmark films Blade Runner and Blood Simple. His singular talents even inspired acclaimed critic Roger Ebert to coin the Stanton-Walsh rule, which states that any film featuring either Harry Dean Stanton or M. Emmett Walsh has to have some merit. Tonight we are joined by two tremendously gifted directors who have both had the pleasure of working with Walsh. In addition to the previously mentioned killer image, actor, editor, writer, cinematographer, producer, and director David Winning has helmed films like Storm, Exception to the Rule, Profile for Murder, One of Our Own, and his television credits include Dinotopia, Blood Ties, Stargate Atlantis, Earth Final Conflict, and Merlin. Michael Schroeder directed Walsh earlier this year with Christopher Plummer in the heartwarming film Man in the Chair, which has been receiving critical and audience raves at Film Fest across the country. Schroeder is also an accomplished writer, production manager, producer, and has worked as an assistant director on such films as The Big Easy, Shy People, Shakedown, and Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. It is a great honor to welcome both of these gentlemen to the show. Get him, uh, David here in Calgary. How are you doing? Hi, David. How are you doing? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we're waiting for Michael uh, to call in, but he should call in any moment now. But uh, well, I'm, so glad all, you're do- I'm so glad you're doing this uh, tribute to these well-deserved actors. Absolutely, and and they're they're actors that we all know their faces, uh, but for some of us, the casual movie goer, the names are a little harder to come by, and they, as a result, I don't think they get the recognition that they so richly deserve. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of the character actors kind of like to, uh, as your guest earlier said, hide behind the uh, the anonymity, which is kind of cool. It kind of allows them a lot more opportunities to play these characters that are so Absolutely. great and rich. Absolutely. So tell me how your film your film career started. Did you when did your interest in filmmaking begin? Oh, I have the kind of boring standard story. I started making films when I was ten. Right. I had a Super 8 camera, and I was making uh, you know documentaries about my parents' trip to the zoo when I was a kid, and I was just kind of obsessed with it. And I thought, how can I possibly turn this into a career so I don't have to get a real job? <laughs> so uh, I was uh, probably in my early twenties. I was getting money together to go to UCLA and do the whole film course, you know, film program, and I was working as a waiter and a bouncer and 
you name it. And I got the money all together, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm not going to go to film school. I'm going to make my own movie. So I spent four years, you know, coincidentally, that would have been what the film program would have been, four years in my 20s doing a film called Storm, which uh, was a success for what it was. It, it uh, was released by uh, Warner Home Video in the, in the mid, uh, mid-80s, mid mm-hmm. and it was kind of my little homage to Deliverance. And uh, it did okay, so I was sort of... Sp- you followed that film up with Killer Image. I, I did, actually, and, and Killer Image came about, and it was a sort of another four-year project, started in 86, and we actually got it uh, filmed in 1990. And for four years, I was uh, peddling the script around with this, this character of a U.S. senator. And then the very first page, it said, an Emmett Walsh type. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I thought, and it was, it was like this, you know, the brain trust was sitting around a table one day in 1990 saying, hey, why don't we ask Emmett Walsh if he wants to do it? And so that uh, makes perfect sense. So, we, so sent him, we sent him the script, and he said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> so I guess uh, you you really did conceive it with him in mind. Tell me a little bit about the the story of the film and what character Emma Walsh plays in it. Well, uh, Killer Image is kind of like uh, blow up, blow out that kind of that kind of story. It was about a a brother who's uh, a brother who two brothers who were photographers, and one of the brothers was killed in kind of mysterious circumstances. And during the course of our film, this is like you know this is 17 years back too. But uh, during the course of the film, the brother discovers uh, the last roll of film that his that his dead brother has uh, has shot, and then the, the, this whole kind of political mystery thing is unraveled about uh, a senator in the states. Although I suppose it could have been Canada because we have senators in Canada too, uh, who um, his his um, he's having an affair, and his his brother, played by Michael Ironside, eventually, in the film, uh, kills her and. Uh, tries to cover up the murder and, and that's what the dead brother was kind of involved with trying to expose this whole thing mm. so uh so emmett was quite brilliant and uh, he came up for four days we shot it in in the woods in uh, alberta in uh, what became a very snowy september right. 1990 and uh, he was just great and you know when you're doing low budget movies at the time this was my second feature and we had you know we didn't have very much money so it was it was kind of like well we can afford him for four days Right, and I think we could afford Michael Ironside for maybe seven days. So, and and, yeah. and and like independent production, I'm sure you know. You said it was a four year process to get it realized, exactly. and then the shooting probably. What was the shooting uh, schedule like? I think it was about. It's pretty small, like maybe eighteen, nineteen days. Right, in, uh, it, it, it's October. very much like wait and hurry. It, yeah, exactly. And I, you got you have to imagine. I'm 29. I've you know I've got a little bit of a TV career going, but this is my second feature. And up comes Emmett Walsh, and this is this is 1990, so he's just six years off of Blood Simple, which is a film I idolize, oh. and you know eight years off of uh, Blade Runner. So right. I was uh, really uh, terrified. Yeah, did did you have preconceived notions about him? Because he seems like, I mean, he could be a, he could be a sweetheart, and I'm sure you'll. Oh, he was. Like that, he was a total sweetheart. In fact, I say like people a very say to me, "Wrong personality." This is this is 20 years later. People say to me, "Who's your favorite actor you've ever worked with?" It's always Emmett. And I've only had the pleasure of working with him once, but he was just he was a teddy bear, kind of kind of the guy you can imagine. He I mean, he, he, play, he plays some pretty sleazy characters, obviously, things like Blood Simple and, and the, the Private Detective, which everybody knows him from. But uh, just a wonderful actor and the kind of guy who would give you a completely different take every single take, mm-hmm. which you'd think would drive continuity people crazy and editors he would be screaming. But it was always some kind of brilliant performance nugget that he'd be offering in and uh, it was always hard to pick which take to use because he was just he was on all the time wow well what were you wanting from his character and and how did he exceed those expectations for you well he was supposed to be kind of a broken man because he he seemed like uh you know he, he wasn't really involved in any of the wrongdoings in the film he didn't kill his girlfriend and this was all stuff that the michael ironside character had done who was his younger brother it's really it was really a story about two brothers two older two younger Mm-hmm. And uh, and so by the end of the film, I was really looking for a. Uh, I mean, he's got this great scene where he kind of breaks down, and you realize he didn't really know any of the bad stuff that had been going on. And his brother had just been, you know, working his way through the kind of a Macbeth character, you know, working his way through uh, his his uh, the senator brother's uh, friends and and girlfriends and etc. Trying to you know ultimately get more power in the story. And uh, and Emma's just got this heartbreaking scene at the end where he confronts Michael Ironside and. Uh, realizes what he's done and 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 uh, well I can't tell you how it ends because you have to go rent it. <laughs> but it's very exciting it's a gripping gripping ending so, so you've 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 spoken about uh, his uh 
different uh, choices that he makes in each take. What what else did you observe of his working process? Well, I just you know some of these people are just so automatic. I mean, they 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 act like they like they breathe. You know, they I mean they're they're used to traveling all over the world and doing all these kind of different parts, small films, big films, and he just he just was. It was you could tell it was just in his blood. I mean, he would. It's the kind of performance where when you were shooting on set, everybody get really quiet when Emmett was on, <laughs> because it was just like it was like he would make it real for those seconds when you were filming. And and, and he uh, commands your attention. I mean, you, yeah. you you really, when he comes up on screen, you do pay attention. Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, I honestly, my personal opinion, I think the guy should have got an Oscar in 1984 for Blood Simple. Yeah. I thought I thought oh, Martin absolutely. Luther, the detective was just an unbelievable performance. And, and I mean, and obviously, great writing. I'm a big, you know, enormous fan of the Coen Brothers. Brilliant writing. I think mm-hmm. they're probably the best writers in the business now. Would that be your favorite uh, outside of your own film? Of course. Would that be your favorite uh, Walsh performance? I think probably easily, easily Blood Simple. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I hate to say I haven't seen Clean and Sober. I've heard so much about how how great he is in that. It's a Michael Keaton film, I think. Isn't yes, it? he's. Yeah, I've got to see that. And he, obviously, he is fantastic in that, and 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 a part of, of of great size too. I mean, he's he's really uh, Michael Keaton's uh, co-star all the way throughout that film, and just an wow. amazing performance. Yeah. Uh, and one that we're not used to seeing him him give. I mean, he plays he plays very very wounded. He plays an ex addict. Uh, a very very sensitive portrayal. Uh, yeah. It's a great film. Jerry, do you have a favorite uh, M. Emmett Walsh? Program? Well, I mean, there's that. I mean, there's Blood Simple and there's there's Clean and Sober. But I think for my generation of comedies and everything in the '80s, he has small but incredibly funny parts in two films because we're so used to seeing him from these, you know, Blood Simple and Blade Runner. Yes. But in Raising Arizona, <laughs> Fletch, yeah. Back to School, right. especially in Back to School as the coach. Yes. I mean, there's just something. Hey, it's the it's the guy from Blood Simple. You know, I'm in a theater. It's like what 1986. I'm like, hey, it's the guy from Blood Simple. Yeah. You know, but no, but he always brought this. You know, when you saw him in a movie, and I guess for me because it was because of Blood Simple. But as you get older, you go back and watch films like There's Straight Time mm. and Slap Shot. He's in. He's in Midnight Cowboy. I mean, he's in everything. But don't don't forget the uh, swimming coach and Ordinary People. That's right. Absolutely. 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 What classic films. I'm yeah. just I mean, he's on all over on. the place. Yeah. Wow, wow. So I, I understand that you just uh, finished working on, and I hope I, I didn't misinterpret this email, you just finished working on a Freddy Krueger movie? Well, I, call it a, I call it a Freddy Krueger movie. I just got the, had the pleasure of working with Robert England. Oh, okay. Uh, it wasn't actually a Freddy Krueger movie, but uh, that's how everyone knows Robert. So. Yeah. yeah. So probably that's, like what, that's what we say as shorthand. Right but No, I just did a movie for uh, Sci-Fi Channel called Black Swarm. I hmm. uh, just literally wrapped it three days ago in Montreal. And, Congratulations! Uh, was so, a lot so, of fun. so, so, what is what is that film about? Uh, it's about a uh, genetically engineered uh, killer swarm of wasps that take over a small town in New York. Mm. I'm there. Sound like, doesn't that sound like a great popcorn movie? <laughs> that sounds Those like movies, an excellent. Popcorn. This is a Saturday Night movie, right? Saturday yeah, exactly. Night Sci-Fi. Those <laughs> exactly. movies are awesome. Yeah. I love those movies. Yeah, and I just did. I just you may have, hopefully maybe somebody's seen uh, something beneath with Kevin Sorbo, which I did uh, in uh, Winnipeg, Canada. Froze in underground sewer pipes minus minus forty degrees. Wow! Last, last November, and I think that just came out on uh, Sci Fi Channel or Video on Demand this summer. Okay, cool. That was fun, and I obviously worked with Kevin on uh, Andromeda for four or five seasons, so mm-hmm. that was a great experience. But Sci Fi Channel's doing lots of cool stuff. They really are. They're they're, they're really starting to come out uh, as as a made a major player. Uh, and, and producing some exceptional work. Uh, well, David, it, it, people can find you on your website, correct? DavidWinning.com. Yes, I'm on DavidWinning.com. I'm also on MySpace, as everyone seems to be on MySpace now. Yeah, we, we're all on MySpace. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Speaking very much. about your experiences with Mr. Walsh, and uh, you come bet. back anytime you'd like. Okay, thanks, guys. Take care. You thank too. you so much. That is director David Winning, whose film Killer Image features M. Emmett Walsh and Michael Ironside, a great director. He does a lot of interesting work, exciting work, and just the the, the, the life of a film director. Yeah, uh, and, and I'd just like to say something also about our, our last guest, and it's something, he has an enthusiasm that really caught me off guard. I was really impressed by that. He's been in the business for a long time, but his enthusiasm for the art and mm-hmm. the of making motion pictures 
was very refreshing to hear. I don't hear it enough, and it was really nice to be able to talk to him. Absolutely. And, and you think about um, how he spoke of, of you know, we shot uh, for, uh, under 40-degree weather, and, uh, you know, I waited four years, and we got 16 shooting days, and, you know, the challenges of shooting, but that's yeah. all part of the joy of it for yeah. someone that truly has a passion and a love for it. The happy it. accidents kind and of thing. so clearly does. He yeah. really does have a passion and a love for what he does. So uh, uh, definitely look look him up, uh, davidwinning.com, and uh, uh, look him up on MySpace as well, and uh, check out some of his previous works, and uh, we definitely look forward to his uh, his Black Swarm film on uh, the Sci-Fi Channel. That sounds like a fun movie. Yes, it does. But uh, M.M. Walsh, just an incredible, incredible actor, and it just you read off some of those some of those credits. Yeah. Straight time with Dustin Hoffman, and he—he he really isn't that an Arthur Penn film as well. I, I think it is. It's, um, it's based on an Ed, Edward Bunker novel. I just watched it actually a couple months ago because it just finally came out on DVD. Oh, is it available now on DVD? It is available. It has. I and I was never able to find it on on like like VHS because you know wherever video club I belong to never had it. But it is out on DVD, and I actually strongly recommend it um, for people to watch. It's a great Dustin Hoffman film. And one that I don't think gets sung enough about. A lot of people make a big deal about them, but this is one of those great films. Yeah, it really is. And I think that I, I, I heard an interview with Dustin Hoffman where he talked about the most uh, fulfilling experiences he's had with characters. And he mentioned Straight Time. And he said, uh, this is a movie they didn't catch on, and many people don't even remember but I thought I did really good work in that film. And, and you know, when you're backed up by an actor like M. Emmett Walsh, uh, I'm sure that that goes a long way towards helping you realize your goals as an actor as well. Right. Uh, so just a series of fantastic movies. So that is available on DVD now. It is. Just, I think, the last two months it's come out. You know, I, I was first, I probably was aware of him from Blade Runner and Raising Arizona as an adolescent, but I remember going to the theater to see Clean and Sober and being uh, uh, very much taken by uh, Mr. Walsh. And, and then I started to investigate a lot of his films after that. And it, Straight Time was one of them that I found. In an old... Yeah, it, it's amazing. that he, he goes way back. I mean, he goes really like with like the great films of the 70s, and he is in some of those very like bit parts, but he's part of that legacy. Um, so he's definitely, I mean, he's done his due, that's for sure, and keeps doing it. Um, yeah, and he seems like a very kind of no nonsense guy. Right. Uh, I mean, he's definitely, without a doubt, an artist. But I, I, I've read, um, I've read uh, this kind of uh, testimony from people that live near him. I think he lives on a ranch, or, or possibly I'm wrong, but I think he lives near a small town. And they say he's just a very, very polite, unassuming guy. Uh, very open and warm, but kind of, you know, he's just, you would never guess in a million years that this man has been featured in over 188 films and television. Right, no, I know, it's it's amazing. All right, we uh, we have, uh, we read the intro a little bit ago for M. Emmett Walsh. We have the director of the film, Man in the Chair, Mr. Michael Schroeder, that has been so so generously waiting on hold for us. Mr. Schroeder, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. I, I'm so sorry about the uh, about the mix-up, but thank you so much for for hanging in there with us. No, I enjoyed uh, their comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your your film, Man in the Chair. Uh, I, I've heard so many so many great things about this film, and I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, when you conceived it, did you have Emmett Walsh in mind? He is uh, one of my favorite character actors, so he was like one or two guys that. Uh, that we uh, were thinking about going out to. And uh, I based that character on a neighbor I had in West Hollywood who was a really gentle soul. He was he was a gay man that lived next door to me, and he was mm-hmm. so kind. And, and when I uh, uh, wrote the, the character and then later met Emmett, he had that voice, that gentle quality of him. Of, he can be really funny and rough and gruff and all that, but he's got a really soft side, and he brought it full tilt into that Mickey character in Man in the Chair. Yeah, and, and just a fantastic cast that you have. You have uh, Emmett playing opposite Christopher Plummer. Right, yeah. Amazing actor. Uh, just looks like a fantastic film. 
Um, how, how would you define, because we started at the top of the show trying to define the term character actor. Do you think that's a valid term? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I remember uh, at Stony Brook a couple weeks ago uh, from the Q&A there with Christopher Plummer, he said he loves to play characters that he can sort of hide into. Mm-hmm. And I think that a, a uh, a character actor is one who can do that. Um, more often than not, your your leading men or your uh, whatever it is, your leading women, they never totally divorce themselves from the screen. You can still see that person, uh, no matter who it is. I don't want to mention any names, but what a real character actor can can hide in there, and you don't necessarily see the actor. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You don't yeah. see the star. Absolutely. Um, do you have a what? What have you observed of 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 uh, Mr. Walsh's working experience? You mean what process. films have I seen of his? Or? Well, his process, his working process. Well, he and uh, he and Christopher Plummer are very similar. They like to work from the outside in. You know, um, be it at a cane or a, a hump to your back or or yellow up your teeth or something. They start working on the outside, and ultimately it it, be, it becomes internalized uh, where instead of working from the inside out, which some actors do. And I find that those guys were, were really uh, – Emmett was, uh, was really great about that. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that, uh, that your film with uh, Man in the Chair is your baby in a sense, and it's hard to avoid prejudice. But outside of that film, what would you say your favorite M. Emmett Walsh performance is? Um, I have to say the contract guy, Woody, in a film called Brubaker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He uh, he was amazing in that. Uh, uh, of course, he's great in uh, uh, Blade Runner and, and of course, uh, Simple, uh, Blood Simple. Yeah. But uh, Brubaker was a film that uh, was totally under the... The, the radar. No, not many people saw that picture, and not many people know how great that picture is. And it's one of my favorites. And often when I rewatch it, I'm amazed at uh, how great Emmett is. He's so subtle and underspoken, yet he's creepy as could be. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, he really, he really could could play any, can play anything. No, I mean, uh, yeah. Look at, uh, I think it was raising Arizona. He was playing that guy was that was weld that worked in the welding shop with yeah. Cage, right. and he's going out there on I ninety five. You know, he's talking. You, know, <laughs> he's just like that. He can be very funny, and but you call action, he gets right into it. And uh, uh, he was a joy to work with on the set. I have to, I have to admit, he, he really, he's a man who enjoys his job. He really does seem to. He seems to have boundless energy and a, yeah. and a real love of his craft. I mean, this year alone, including Man of the Chair, he has seven films expecting release, and he's he's doing a play right now, and it's just boundless energy. Yeah, yeah, and he's like uh, up early in the morning and uh, full of vim and vigor. He's he's a he's a interesting study that guy. <laughs> <laughs> now I I know your picture has been getting some. Fantastic notices. When you showed Mr. Walsh the final cut, what, what was his reaction to it? Well, that's interesting because um, Emmett has been so busy, he hasn't been able to attend any of the cast and crew screenings or any of the test screenings, any of the early stuff. Uh, and then we finally locked picture, got it all finished, and then he saw it for the first time, I think three weeks ago, at, at the Stony Brook Film Festival. And he saw it with 1,012 people. <laughs> and Afterwards, they gave him and Christopher an amazing five-minute Stein ovation. It's the longest ovation they've ever had at that festival, and the, the film was rated, uh, um, it got so many excellent uh, votes by the audience. It's the highest-rated film in their history of their festival. And afterwards, Emmett was so hilarious. Uh, someone asked him from the audience, uh, what did you do special to prepare for the role? He goes, I immediately went out and gained 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, of course, he plays a, a, a sort of a forgotten Hollywood writer who, you know, he plays his opening scene, he's shirtless, and he has these sores on him because he lives in this really terrible nursing home. And, uh, and he just went uh, full tilt into that. Uh, yeah. People actually titter a little bit. There's a little bit of laughter when they first see him because it seems kind of funny. Then you realize instantly how sad this all is right. and he does it without changing expression and uh he i mean he 
he blew that character away, and he's so great. He's so great. Mm-hmm. So, so when can we expect uh, to see that? What's what's the current status? Uh, Manitou is coming out uh, December seven, okay. and Chicago, New York, L. A., San Francisco, and Boston. And we're doing a real awards push for Christopher Plummer, Emmett Walsh, and Michael Angarano. All three uh, have been getting great reviews, uh, and deservedly so, for their uh, performance. And both Emmett and, and Christopher have been ignored by the Academy for for many, many years. And yes, they have. And maybe this is a uh, this is the time. I remember when uh, Christopher wrote me a letter after the film, and. It was it was quite emotional. I actually uh, wept when I read it because you know he was thanking me for this for this opportunity for have written maybe something for the, his last chance at this award. And Emmett's the same way. He's he's been in everything and knows everybody. And and still his name isn't really household. And it, it should be because he's such a wonderful talent. 